So Tiffany, what about um, the preoperative use of the PARP inhibitors? I think there's been some Viliparib data, hasn't sure. there been? There has been. I think that the idea of combining PARP inhibitors and chemotherapy has a, a rationale there um, with PARP inhibition if you have impaired DNA damage repair and then you partner that with a cytotoxic agent that will create a lot of DNA damage, we would hope that that would be synergistic in some way and have a better outcome. Um, I think that the Brightness study, which showed a randomized trial of anthracycline taxane-based treatment, um, adding in an arm with the platinum, adding in a combination arm of viliparib with platinum, um, actually showed there wasn't much incremental advantage at all to a PARP inhibitor over a platinum. And so I don't know if that means perhaps that the platinum in and of itself is contributing so much that we don't see an incremental advantage there to the PARP inhibitor. Um, there has been some interesting data in the iSpy sort of mechanism that's somewhat encouraging. And so I think we need to be careful about these combinations. Um, there's certainly more toxicity when you combine PARP inhibition with some of these other sort of platinum-based agents, and in the metastatic setting, it's actually been quite challenging to overlap drugs like elaparib with cisplatin or even carboplatin. So I, I think that that addition in the pre-op setting was a negative right. trial. So we don't have right now data that would suggest we would, that would be a useful strategy no. for patients at, at this moment, pre, right. pre-operatively. Um, but, um, but Claudine, just tell us a little bit about the um, Olympia opportunity out mm -hmm. there for um, early stage BRCA right. patients. So I think one of the things that, that, that we really think of is, is there a role for PARP inhibitors in a more protected fashion, more like in a semi-maintenance yeah. type uh, setting? And so the ongoing large Olympia trial is looking at BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers. Specifically, they have to have high enough risk disease. HER2 negative again, so hormone receptor positive is allowed. Um, and it's randomizing those patients to a year of elaparib or placebo, basically, in the patient population. Um, so I think that'll, that'll give us some very important data in, in that group of patients. And it is not to, putting it on top of the chemotherapy. It's after the chemotherapy is done. Patients are allowed to have gotten a platinum or not. Um, they have to have gotten prior chemotherapy. So it's really trying to address whether we can add anything, whether we can further improve outcome in that group of patients. Super. Well, it's such an important trial. Right. I mean, amazing. Right. So, um, Aditi, what about combining um, PARP inhibitors with checkpoint inhibitors? What's the, the rationale for that? There's a lot of interest, and in now that um, you know, maybe maybe we'll have access to both of those in, in practice pretty pretty soon, you know, we might be tempted to, to do a little of that. What's what's going on there? Yeah, these days checkpoint inhibitors are being combined with everything, um, and I think they'll be combined <laughs> with PARP inhibitors as well. But there is there is some preclinical rationale. Um, the PARP inhibitors affect, you know, the repair of um, the, um, the, the affect the repair of DNA, and that leads to some genomic instability and more expression of the antigens. Um, and there is also so that's point number one that it can affect the innate immunity and the presentation of antigens, which can potentially increase immunotherapy response. And the second is that there is data, not so much in breast cancer, but more in ovarian cancer in preclinical models, that BRCA, uh, that uh, PARP inhibitors could actually increase PD-1 expression. Um, so if you use PARP inhibitors, the PD-1 expression is increased, and then you add a PD-1 inhibitor, that could potentially lead to synergy. And in ovarian cancer, there have been trials looking at combination of PARP inhibitors with PD-1 with quite encouraging results. Uh, and in breast cancer, um, there was data presented at San Antonio uh, meeting looking at combination of a PARP inhibitor with a PD-1 inhibitor. It was a phase 1b trial. Uh, the numbers are small, but the two take-home points were that A, it can be safely combined the incidence of severe immunotherapy complications was very low, um, and the toxicities were not overlapping. So you could potentially combine a PARP inhibitor with a PD-1 inhibitor. And second, the efficacy looked good. Um, there were complete responses seen. There were, I think, five or so patients who had partial responses, and the trial had a criteria that you need to have a disease control rate at 12 weeks of 75%, which was a decent high bar. Um, and in the trial, the disease control rate was 
So it met its primary objective. It demonstrated that you could potentially combine these agents. Um, and I think we would likely see more trials that combine PD-1 inhibitors with PARP inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of um, a sense. That was the Olaparib, right, with Dravalumab, um, which is a PDL one inhibitor. Is that right? Yeah, that's that was interesting. Um, small small numbers yet, but but encouraging and certainly a signal to to go to go forward. Um, and particularly, um, you know, potentially might have some implications for combining uh, checkpoint inhibitors with platinum-based agents in the in the neoadjuvant setting as well as well as we'll get to so really quite quite early but very very uh, interesting and promising so well thank you very much for that um, that discussion about the uh, parp inhibitors